Byron. Thank you so much for taking the time to join me uh, and talk a little bit about what you've been doing uh, running for the uh, 19th district. Um, first off, you know, the question I've been asking everybody in the beginning of the interview is what's in your cup? And it's kind of just a faux coffee house style interview. Of course, it's virtual in this day and age, but uh, what kind of drink would you like to be drinking this time in the afternoon? Uh, this time of the afternoon is called Electrolyte. You actually can pick it up at most 7-Elevens. You know, when you're out here knocking doors just about every day, it's hot, it's humid. So you have to keep your electrolytes up. It's actually pretty good. It's replaced Gatorade for me. Oh, cool. Yeah, I can imagine you're looking for like that sport drink type thing while you're out in the heat trying to knock on doors, talk to voters. Yep. So, yeah, I'm out right now in Cape Coral and we're knocking on doors and I always make sure I grab a bottle of that. Actually, my son is the one that put me on to it because he's a football player in high school. And he said, you know, a bunch of the guys on the team, this is what they drink when they're training. And so I tried it once and it was actually very refreshing. So we just kind of kept it as a matter of practice when you're out knocking doors in the field. Sure. Well, uh, Byron, I'm sure you go over this with a lot of people you speak to door to door. But um, the first question I've been asking all the candidates is to explain a little bit about their background. Now, I know you're already in elected office, so talk about uh, why you were interested in running for the 19th district to be our next congressman. Uh, for, to run for Congress, Southwest Florida needs a proven conservative to represent our area. We are one of the most conservative areas of the country. We deserve to have a proven conservative represent us in Congress. I got started in the Tea Party movement 10 years ago um, in my time in the legislature from 2016 on, and there's a car actually coming right now as I talk, but that's okay. Uh, in my time in the legislature from 2016 on to today, um, I have one of the most conservative voting records in the Florida legislature. Um, there was a bill that came through on school safety that had red flag laws um, and also had other gun control, like raising the age from 18 to 21. Uh, I voted against that bill going against, going against Republican leadership. And so when I looked at our congressional seat here, the number one thing I wanted was to make sure that we had a proven conservative and that's why I decided to jump into this race. The other thing that I think we also need is that our member of Congress has to be able to be a leader in the political culture war that faces America. It's something that requires strong conservatives who are not afraid to speak out and speak up about what conservative principles are and how that actually fix, uh, fixes a lot of the, the issues in our country, especially in our inner cities and our urban corridors. And so I think that those are the things that are necessary if you're going to serve in Congress. And that's why I decided to run. Gotcha. Gotcha. And I think, you know, that touches a little bit on uh, your priorities in office. But that's my second question is, uh, you know, I want to get a sense of if you are elected our next congressman, uh, what would be the first things you'd try to start accomplishing while in office uh, representing our district? Well, the first thing is actually specifically for Southwest Florida, that's making sure that we fund our water quality here, our water projects. Um, you can give a lot of speeches about our water uh, but the truth is there has to be a commitment in Washington to fund the projects. As long as we have that, we can actually do the work to make sure we repair the Lake Okeechobee flowway system so we can have clean water in Southwest Florida for fishing, for our economy, and for our way of life, and for our, our environment. So that's the Southwest Florida specific issue. Um, as a member of Congress, the number one thing I think is term limits. Uh, it is long past time that we start removing members of Congress who have just been there too long. We look at our debt that's almost $26 trillion. Well, most of that's because we have member of, members of Congress who simply don't retire and go away. They're the ones that brought us to where we are. It's time for them to go home. The third thing is actually putting us on a balanced budget footing, which also means having zero-based budgeting where we will put agencies on a rotation cycle, begin to zero out their budgets and rebuild them from the ground up. When you do that, you can get rid of a lot of the wasteful programs that have existed for a very long time things probably that's been around since the Nixon administration and before is to really get a hold of the federal spending and our federal debt. Gotcha. Gotcha. So it sounds like you have a lot of uh, ideas that you'd like to implement pretty quickly. Well, you know, the last question I've been asking each of the candidates has to do with the current climate that we're in as a country right now. Um, I've kind of I, summed it up as we're facing three crises, right? We've got unemployment, we have the widespread pandemic, and we have some of the social strife that we've seen erupt in some cities around the country. And so how do you feel like your role as a congressman and Congress's role as a, as a whole, what, what role could Congress take to address some of these major issues that our country's facing? 
Well, I think the major role for Congress right now is to make sure that we don't play games and pass wasteful spending bills. That's number one. If you look at what's going on between these quote unquote negotiations between the House Democrats and the president and the Republicans in the Senate, the problem is we're talking about $1 trillion or $3 trillion. And truthfully, $3 trillion is a bunch of wasteful spending that's not needed. It's pork. It's uh, special interest projects that they can never get through any other way. So it's making sure that you don't actually do that kind of terrible stuff because the nation doesn't need it. And you shouldn't be let using crises as a way to get accomplished the things you can never get done in regular order. Uh, the second thing I think Congress needs to be actually true leaders on is making sure the American people have the right information when it comes to coronavirus. Uh, one of the things that I don't like is that we keep tracking the number of cases, but we don't talk about the percentage of recovery. That's what we should be focused on as a nation is the percentage of recovery, what the true uh, mortality rate is across the entire population and also what the rate per 1,000 people that have died from coronavirus. That actually puts everybody in the right uh, footing and the right mindset of how we're gonna deal with this going forward. The third thing is we have to have leadership that understands that we can go back to work. We can go, our kids can go back to school. Uh, we can engage in our economy fully again while also managing some of the health characteristics associated with COVID-19. We can do both. We're a smart people, we're a great people. America's battled and overcome so many things before in its past, and we're going to do that again today and right now. Gotcha. Well, uh, I think uh, as a last question and kind of at the end of the interview, I've given each candidate just a little time to uh, make a general pitch to voters before Election Day and talk about what sets you apart as a candidate in a race that is pretty crowded. There's 11 candidates that are going to be on the primary ballot. Well, listen, first of all, I just want to thank the voters for actually taking the time to watch this and getting as much information as they can. You have a lot of choices in front of you. The number one thing I would ask you is Southwest Florida is the most conservative area in the country. I know I want a true conservative representing Southwest Florida, and I think that that's what uh, you as voters, that's what you want as well. Um, I'm endorsed by the NRA, the Club for Growth, Americans for Prosperity, the Republican Li Liberty Caucus, the House Freedom Fund, which is the political arm of the House Freedom Caucus, Freedom Works, Tea Party Express, and Senator Rand Paul. Every conservative group in the country that we actually, tra that tracks members of Congress have looked at my record and they have seen that I am the true conservative in this race. So I'm asking for your vote and I'm asking for your support on August 18th. Awesome. Well, I think that's perfect, Byron. It was uh, quick and easy. You had, you had good answers. Uh, yeah, so.